Thank you for joining our Sunday School lesson for the 11th of December 2022. Our topic is the second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we bless your name, O God, for another opportunity to share your word. I bring myself before you, Jehovah God. Without you, I can do nothing. Without you, I am nothing. I therefore pray for the help and the leading of the Holy Ghost. I receive anointing, Lord, and the grace to pass on your word in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you circumcise every man, woman, boy, or girl, Lord, that will listen, that will watch Jehovah God, that this word will have free course in their lives. Thank you for helping us, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. We are looking at the second coming of Christ. Let us start reading from Revelation chapter 19, beginning to read from verse 1. Revelations 19 from verse 1. After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlots who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her blood, on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they said, Hallelujah! Her smoke rises up for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you, his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of many mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and I am your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war his eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns he had a name written that no one knew except himself he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with, with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness fierceness and wrath of all the almighty God and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying all the birds that fly in the mist of heaven come and gather together for the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and then their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who work, worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with burnstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Praise the Lord. Read 20, 
verses 1 and 2. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon and the serpent of old, he, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Okay. Praise the Lord. The events of the end times can be quite confusing. That is why even among Bible scholars, it is still difficult, I must say. They don't quite agree on the timetable of end time events. But what we are going to share today is what is agreed, what is believed by majority of believers we are going a little bit back from what is written in our Sunday school manual because we need to understand we need to understand we have we need to have a kind of balanced knowledge or something close to it now the end time events according to popular belief is going to start with the rapture of the church. Paul talked about it in Corinthians. I think in Thessalonians as well. The rapture, which is the catching away of the saints. That is the first that is going to happen. Now, let me mention from start that Bible scholars do not agree on when this event will happen. So, the rapture followed by the judgment seat of Christ, the, the beamer of Christ, followed by the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then, the great tribulation and then the second coming of Christ which has been read for us and then that will be followed by the battle of Armageddon which was read last and then the judgment of believers and unbelievers, the sheep and the goats that Jesus talked about in Matthew and then the millennial rule of Christ and we also read that when um, the, the, the dragon the false prophet will be bound and thrown into the bottomless pit and the Bible says after that then Satan will be bound and finished forever in the in the in hellfire with all that did not uh, follow Jesus or that had the mark of the beast then comes the final and final end of the events of history so we're going to just look at that uh, quickly because we don't have a lot of time now believers Christians believe that the rapture is going to take place. And like I said before, it is Christians in good standing. Paul says it will take place in the twinkle of an eye. Jesus talked about, he said, two women will be grinding. And one will be taken and the other left. He said, two men will be going on the road. Piap, one is taken. The one that is ready. And so on and so forth. People will just disappear from all over the world. Jesus said, Paul said, we'll meet him in the air. He says, those that are alive, those of us that are alive, will not hinder those that are dead. He said they will come. The dead in Christ will rise first. And then those that are living will move. I will meet Jesus. That is the rapture. Like I said before, 
that would then be followed. As soon as that happens, then the church will be in the minor, or sorry, the world will enter the tribulation. But three and a half years of minor tribulation. It is during that time that that to three and a half there will be an agreement between the Jews and the Antichrist. The Antichrist representing Satan the dragon and the false prophet. So that will happen. Persecutions will start. People will start taking the, 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 the mark of the beast 666. And then three and a half years into that. But during the three and a half years, Israel, the Jews, would accept the Antichrist as the proper Christ. That is not to say as we speak. Can you just switch it off? As we speak, a lot of Jews know that Jesus is actually the Christ. And there are believers of Jews that are Christians. Of course, the, a lot of people in government and the state of Israel and so on and so forth do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ. They are still waiting for the Messiah. Therefore, once the Antichrist comes, he will sign an agreement with Israel and they will recognize him as their Messiah, unfortunately. And when that happens, that will be, they will be deceived and they will start acting. And there will be agreement with all the governments of the world. There will be one world religion. Already the movement is started. There will be one world religion, the Jewish religion. The, some people on the Christian side, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Sikh, and all of them, already they have met. And sometime this year, or sorry, sometime this year, I think it will be, it will now be next year. An agreement will be signed between them. We are all one. They will say we are all one. We worship the same God. And therefore there is no need. Let us come together. And there might be a place where everybody can go and worship. And so on and so forth. And the Jews will raise the temple. And they will start their worship then. Unfortunately, after the minor tribulation, three and a half years, the Antichrist will now desecrate the temple. That is prophesied by Daniel. That's also talked about by Jesus. The abomination of desolation. That is when the Jews will say, uh -huh. so this person will have been deceived. This person is not our Messiah. And then trouble will start. The agreement will be broken. And that will mark the beginning of the major tribulation. All that we read in Revelation, so much tribulation that the world has never seen. And some of the Jews who will now recognize and say, look, we're not taking the mark of the beast because you are not our Messiah. The Bible says 144,000 of them will be killed because of their faith. And that tribulation will continue. You will not buy, you will not sell if you don't have the mark of the beast. I don't want to imagine what will happen. And it's not just the Jews. Anybody who has refused, there are some Christians who will miss the rapture. And therefore, and therefore, some of them will take the mark. But others will say, look, no. We made the first mistake by not being faithful to God. That's why we miss the rapture. And then a lot of the people will be killed. Jesus also talked about it. He said the father will betray the son to death. Mother-in-law will betray the daughter-in-law and so on and so forth. But some Christians all over the world who miss the rapture 
are going to now stand for their faith, a lot of them will be killed as well. That is seven years of tribulation. At the same time, the people who went to heaven during the rapture will now be having the events in heaven. So that is when there will be marriage of the Lamb. That is when the Christians or people who are there will uh, appear before the judgment, the Bema seat, to receive reward, to receive crowns, and to receive stars. That will be going on for seven whole years in heaven. Can you imagine not being there? Then, like we said, it is then the great tribulation, the abomination of desolation that we have said. It is after that, then what we have read next will come to pass that Jesus will now mount on the white horse with innumerable company of angels and we sense that are in heaven will now come back. That is when the battle of Armageddon will take place because the Antichrist will have will be so much in charge he will gather soldiers from all over the world and they will march against Jerusalem. By then Jesus will come and face them and the Bible says he will slaughter them with the word, this, this, the word of his mouth which is the sword, the two-edged sword. Saints all in white and in white horses will come with Jesus. Millions and millions and millions of us will come with Jesus. But the good thing is that this time we are not going to fight. The king will do the fighting. I have been privileged to visit the place where that war will take place. And the valley where all the blood of the slain will flow. And you will, by the time you go there and these things are shown, you won't have any doubt that the Bible is correct. That is when the birds of the air, the, all the animals will gather and begin to eat the flesh of people. I don't know whether the, no, none of those people will be buried. The animals will gather, the birds will gather from all over the world and come and feast on them. Praise the Lord. Now, after the, the battle, then the millennial reign of Christ. That is when Satan will be bound for a thousand years and put in the bottomless pit. And that is when Jesus said to the apostles, said, Peter said, hey Lord, the rich young ruler came and refused to sell what he had to feed the poor. And Peter said, we have left all and followed you, Lord. What is our reward? And Jesus said, don't worry. Apart from you getting houses and, and brethren and all things, you will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. So Peter, John, James, and the rest of them, each of them will be in charge, governor of one of the tribes of Israel during the, 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 the 1,000 years. But you and I, therefore, who have been faithful and are part of that team, will also get places to judge or to govern. My own might be Abia State. Your own might be your village. But all saints will be involved in ruling with Jesus. That is how it will be for 1,000 years. And then after comes the end. Satan will be loosed for a few more, for, for some time, deceiving and being deceived. Deceive more people. And then the final uh, end will come. The new heaven and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, like I was mentioning at the beginning, there are some school of thought 
knowledgeable believers who believe that the rapture will take place not at the beginning of the minor tribulation, but at the middle. That is, after the minor tribulation of three and a half years, then the rapture. Others believe that all believers alive will go through the seven years of tribulation. And if you look at the scriptures, there's also enough to convince some people. So they are not just believing. But whatever the case, <laughs> there is something that we have to take home for this. Even if it's so complex that you and I don't understand it fully. But there is something to take home. And what is it? It says these people that ride with Jesus have white remnants, which is the righteousness of the saints. And Peter said, seeing that these things will be so, what kind of believers are we supposed to be? Seeing that signs are being fulfilled, seeing that in Revelation 13, God talked about the number 666. And he says, without it, nobody will buy or sell. Seeing that already the chips are here. And all their studies have showed that you put it under the skin of the hand and use it to operate your computer. Use it to operate your bank account. When you go to the uh, to the supermarket to buy things, it won't be I give you cash and you give me cash. The cashless society means that nobody will be using cash then. Because you have the chip that contains all your information, the kind of chip that is in 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 um, in the bank cards, ATM cards, the kind of chips that is on the mobile phone. That is what we are talking about. Every ATM card has it. Look at it. That yellow golden part. That, that's it. That is why I can go to the ATM, slot it in, and he knows my name. He knows everything about me. And then I just slot in the PIN number. Already, it's been outdated. There are companies especially in Belgium, I think it's in Belgium where they've started it, and they've done the study that they just, instead of having your card, it is just injected there. And you just, just the way you can use your bank card to buy things in the shop. That's the way, just a pip, and the door would open, pip, and your computer will recognize it. That is what is going to be happening in the shops. It's already been tested. And you will say, this big chip, how does it enter? It's been, it becomes so tiny. It's as small as a grain of rice. That's all. So all they do is train whoever is giving it. And it's very simple. Take a syringe, draw it in a syringe. Just put a syringe there, like you're giving injection or you're taking blood, and just inject it. That's all. And it stays under the skin. Finish. And that's all you need. It is already being tested and perfected. If there is no other sign that we should take note of, that one is one of them. There is a video that is trading on Facebook that I saw just yesterday. The Bible says that in um, what's this river, Euphrates, that there are four Fallen angels that are there at the bottom of the river, Euphrates. And that when that time comes, they will come up and there will be instruments that will be used to torment people during the, the, the tribulation, during the great tribulation. And there's a video that is trading part of the Euphrates River as the Bible foretold. Because that's going to be the route that the armies of the nations will take to go and, and try and fight Jesus. Why Israel 
That's a different thing. Time would not permit us. But they said that part of that river and there are tunnels. There are tunnels at the bottom of river Euphrates. And the kind of sound that are coming out of there, like dragons, as the Bible described those angels, are coming out. And people suspect that those are those fallen angels that are there that are going to come up. That's the second very serious sign. And there are so many other ones. There are so many other ones that we will not have time to discuss now. Where will the second coming find you? That is the important question. Where will it find me? My brother, I don't want to be here if the rapture is taking place before the tribulation. I want to go on the first bus, meet Jesus in the air, go and attend the seven years of the marriage supper of the Lamb, come back with Jesus to fight the war of Armageddon, come back with Jesus for the 1000 millennial rule, stay with Jesus in the new heaven and the new earth. Anybody who misses that, for whatever reason, will end up either taking the 666 and ending up in hell with Satan. My brother, you don't want to miss that. You don't want to get involved at all in that. God give you the grace. God give me the grace. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, do it now. If you have given your heart to Jesus, stop living carelessly. Stop participating in sin. Jesus might just come at a time when you are not ready. And how terrible that will be. Let us pray. Pray this prayer after me with all your heart. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I have heard your word again today. I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood because you died to save me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Cancel it from the book of death. I want to participate in the rapture. And if I die before then, I want to be raptured when the dead in Christ rise. Thank you for answering me. And if you have done that before, you are a child of God and you know it. Pray with me, dear Lord Jesus. Please, please help me. Give me the grace to follow you till the end. Help me to overcome temptation and the sins that so easily beset me because I want to be where you are eternally. Thank you for answering me because I prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, is there any sickness, anybody that is sick, anybody that is facing any other kind of challenge, Lord, that will bring us down, we pray. Heal us. Heal our bodies, heal our minds. That we will stand for you when you come back. Thank you for answering us, dear Lord Jesus, because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.